Hi everyone, it's 11.01. Uh, I hope you can see me and hear me correctly. Uh, we're gonna wait a minute or two uh, so everyone that wanna join has a chance to, to uh, hear and see everything uh, since the very beginning. Uh, so that's 15 of us already. We're gonna give people just a few minutes. Uh, a few organizational things. Uh, the webinar is recorded, uh, so anyone can uh, request the recording later on by writing to our marketing uh, email. It's marketing at salesmanago.com and uh, you'll be provided with a copy of, uh, of a recording. Uh, also, uh, if you feel like asking any questions, please use the chat window. Uh, it is open. I see it on my uh, on the right hand side of my screen. So uh, I will uh, react to any questions and comments. Shall you have any? Uh, so I hope it's going to be fun. Um, let me just share my screen. Let's try that. Okay, the screen is on. Uh, it's gonna be even better if I start with a slide number one. Uh, okay, I think we can, I think we can start, uh, let me just open chat window so I can see your questions. Uh, so, hello, hi, welcome everyone. Uh, today we're gonna dive deeper into uh, gamified e-commerce and see uh, why should we even care? Because uh, lately uh, there were more interesting things to uh, track, like customer lifetime value, for example. Um, our agenda for today, uh, we, st we will start with uh, very basic uh, gamification 101, which is remind, uh, I will just remind you uh, what is it, what mechanisms we use uh, to gamify stuff. Uh, we gonna talk a bit about what's trending in gamified commerce, why is it big and why uh, it might affect uh, what you are doing. Uh, also, uh, we will talk about customer lifetime value and then we're gonna clash those two together and see where they are overlapping, where they can enhance uh, each other a little bit. And uh, even though it's not a how-to webinar, at the end, I'm gonna give you a sneak peek on what you actually can do with uh, tools available on market uh, to, to uh, gamify your commerce if you want to. So that's our plan. Uh, and yeah, uh, so I'm Maya, uh, that's uh, my first webinar this year. So I'm just gonna introduce myself briefly. Uh, I'm a very nerdy person. I'm into popular culture. I read a lot. Uh, I'm an artist, I paint, I, I draw. I'm a queer person. I use she, they uh, pronouns if you want to address me. Uh, both of them are, are uh, perfectly fine. Uh, I'm also a meditation practitioner and teacher, however, my true passion in life, in professional life is marketing. I'm this marketing person. Uh, I'm a real target group nerd. Uh, I'm marketing strategist, enthusiast. I have an extensive background in uh, content marketing. Uh, right now I'm diving deeper into product marketing with uh, one of my favorite uh, technology uh, uh, technology companies, uh, which is Sales Manago. Uh, I'm related to this company since 2015, and uh, yeah, that's that's why I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you today about uh, about gamifying commerce. Uh, 
uh, that's that's the area uh, that I'm discovering right now. Uh, before we start, uh, let's talk a bit about what's happening around us because I like to make a um, I, I like to make a, this uh, background for the story, story I'm going to tell you. So I won't uh, bore you at the beginning with the uh, heavy technical stuff. A few days back, I came back from Bulgaria. Yeah, I know October is not the best uh, month to, to go for vacation. However, I dreamt of a, a week abroad. So I went to beautiful city of Chernomorets. It's next to, um, it's next to Sozopol. You might have heard of that. And uh, what I've seen in a main square was this, uh, was this table, you see uh, the sign you see on the left-hand side of my screen uh, saying tour spots around you, BNET. Scan the uh, QR code, download the app, install it, and it will be your tour, tour guide. So obviously I did that because yay technology. And also uh, we were there after peak season. So tour guides, tour guides were not available. Uh, and what you can see on the right hand side of my screen is the the lamp post with this tiny white thingy in the middle uh, it was a sign uh, telling me that uh, there's a beacon uh, that will guide me to the next tourist attraction that is around uh, i had absolutely amazing time using this uh, remote tour guide uh, it uh, it helped me to discover absolutely amazing tiny uh, St. Nicholas Church, Orthodox Church. Uh, they had so many uh, church bling. I, I was uh, I was dazzled. So uh, yeah, that was totally worth it. And also, I discovered old Byzantine ruins. Uh, another amazing finding. Uh, and yeah, I was I was walking freely through the city, just uh, checking my phone uh, with silent notifications on, uh, telling me, oh, there's something interesting in your area. Without it, I would probably spend more time on the beach. That uh, wasn't the most bestest idea of them all because it was already a little bit chilly. Uh, and I wouldn't probably dis discover so many things that gave me happiness. Uh, so yeah, that was my first story. Another one, uh, let me take you to a Renaissance fair in US. Mm. This guy uh, is a performer. He uh, does the bullwhip act. I hope that you can hear my, uh, um, I hope you can hear the sound. Uh, can someone on the chat let me know, can you hear the sound of uh, what this guy is saying? No, no feedback. Okay, there are some questions. Uh, no, just surprises. Okay, uh, no chat and no sound. Uh, okay, I can see you on the questions. Okay, thank you for the uh, uh, for the feedback. So uh, I was hoping to give you a treat with that, but uh, I have no idea how to make the sound work, and I don't want to mess up with your time. I will send you the link to this afterwards. However, what the guy is doing, uh, oh, okay, let's see the subtitles. Mm. Uh, he's singing Bohemian Rhapsody, uh, tweaked with the, uh, with, the, with the text, tweaked a little bit, uh, so it fits his uh, bullwhip act. And he in invites uh, mm, the, the audience to sing along with him. And at the moment when he asks, Will you come see my show? They think, obviously, Bismillah, no, we won't see your show. And now he's outraged. Come on, you could have changed the lyrics. And then the, the audience is, yeah, we will love to see your show. So uh, I know, I know it was a bit anticlimactic climactic that I said it uh, instead of just showing you. But uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, what he did. He engaged them easily through the song everyone knows that's one of the most popular songs uh, in a whole wide world and he invited them to sing along 
and he knew exactly what's going to happen. He knew exactly that they will contradict his uh, to, to what he's saying. He will, they will say, no, we won't see your show because that's how song goes. And then he could, but he made the beautiful uh, prep for the whole outrage, being outraged, like, oh no, I don't believe you won't see my show. I, I, now I'm sad, now I'm overly dramatic. And uh, the reason I wanted to show you that is that's how gamification works in real life. It surrounds us. It's, uh, it's the thing uh, um, that is uh, commonly used by many people, sometimes unknowingly. So what does gamification is? I know uh, your old staggers, your old marketing staggers probably know by heart what gamification is. The definition says, is the use of game elements and game design techniques in a context not related to games, aimed at engaging people, motivating to action, stimulating to learn and solve problems while achieving the desired behaviors or other assumed goals. People use it in education, Duolingo app, healthcare, like for example, Endomondo app, human resources. You probably have seen those uh, company challenges uh, for employees, marketing, we're gonna, we're gonna, mm, we'll see this part later on, in sales, uh, in project management, in team management. It's, it has very, mm, it's very versatile. It can be adjusted uh, depending on uh, the goal you want to meet and the uh, resources uh, you can use. And sometimes you don't need many resources. As you have seen with this guy, of course, uh, the, the Bulgarian app probably costed uh, the, the country, the state, a lot of money. However, what the guy did at Renaissance Fair, he had his act and he learned the lyrics. That's it. That's all he need. He just sang a song. Not too many resources, just time and engagement. So um, the gaming elements, we already named a few. Uh, we use uh, to gamify stuff is tasks and challenges. The Bulgarian app gave me tasks to find the, find the, the interesting spots around me. Progress bar or task completion mark. Uh, when you order something online, you usually, usually see this progress bar. You are here, you just uh, specified your order, now tweak it a bit to personalize it, then give us uh, your details and then pay us. You see those five steps and you know where you are at. Then you have badges for achievements. Oh, the countless times I lost my badge in Duolingo. Oh my gosh, it hurt. <laughs> Uh, difficulty development levels. Uh, for example, uh, if you start a game, if you start any challenge, uh, the tasks are usually very simple, like uh, set up your uh, set up your uh, account, uh, set up a picture. But then the difficulty grows incrementally. It gets more and more engaging. Then uh, you have solo and uh, group rivalry. Uh, like for example, uh, people at the Renaissance Fair, uh, they were a group and they were, have, they were having this game with the guy. They were singing, he was singing. So that was some sort of rivalry. Uh, cooperation to achieve a common goal. That was also seen on the Renaissance Fair. Rankings, points or virtual currency. Um, like, for example, in multiple apps like uh, AliExpress, for example, or Shopee app, you have those uh, virtual uh, coins uh, or items you can get for, uh, for making purchases or any other interactions. Rewarding. Uh, you have the mechanisms for rewarding, exchanging, collecting and gifting others. You can exchange stuff you have. You can, for example, donate your coins uh, or collect... Uh, all the badges in a, a specific group of badges. Uh, you have also a communication system. Very often you have uh, 
this uh, chat or forum uh, designed specifically for the app or for the uh, for the shop for the for the group of people interested in some topic. Uh, and why do we like it? Why does it tackle our fancy? Tickle our fancy? I'm so sorry. Uh, because as people, we have some basic needs, and uh, they can be fulfilled through gamification. We care for our status. We want to be better than ourselves yesterday, or we want to be uh, better uh, than others. That's why we get badges. That's why we achieve some levels. Uh, we can do that as a community or as a, uh, individuals. We have competition. We can uh, be rivals with others. We want self-improvement. That's, to uh, that's the top levels of Maslow's uh, pyramid of needs uh, to overcome internal challenges, uh, to, to see how we pro progress over time. Uh, we want the sense of community. We are uh, social beings. We want to be a part of something. That's why social movements and virals are so powerful. Uh, we'd like, we like to trade. We like to interact with other people, not with apps, not with companies. We like to interact with other people so we can exchange stuff, so we can donate stuff. We can help people with that. Uh, we have altruism uh, in us. Uh, we also like to fight against some threat, some external threat uh, to, to be a part of community that, uh, that won over a challenge. Uh, and also, we do not like to lose stuff. Uh, there's this uh, lost cost fallacy that's very well known in marketing. If we already invested some, our, some of our time and energy in doing something, it's harder to give that up uh, because we already feel like this thing is ours, uh, our precious, as would go and say. Uh, so uh, if we see this progress at the beginning, uh, we feel that, uh, that we own the app, that we own our progress, that we own our virtual uh, coins, and uh, we don't want to lose them. Again, Duolingo doing absolutely great job. Uh, same with uh, meditation apps. Like, you have meditated for... 60 consecutive days, meditate for one more. Th those, those communications, they are deeply ingrained, ingrained in our minds, in our core. So uh, using them in different marketing and sales activities will appeal to our needs that we all as consumers have. So that's the part one. Uh, I will stop my blabbering for a second to ask you if you have any questions for this part. I have opened the, the question uh, window. So if you have anything, just hit me with your question. Okay, Tony, uh, let me just scroll down a little bit. Does gamification have to be, be fun? Uh, it doesn't have to be fun in general, but it usually uh, generates some sort of dopamine release in our mind, uh, which our body uh, perceives as fun, as uh, satisfying. So maybe even more satisfying than fun. Uh, the fun is not uh, a necessary factor, in my opinion. That might be uh, an unpopular opinion, but I believe it should be, first of all, satisfying, and then, on second place, fun. That's a good question, by the way. Thank you, Tony. Okay, we have another one. Uh, satisfying uh, is, is, a, <laughs> is a good word for it. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Tony. Okay. Uh, Let's, uh, let's dive a little bit deeper. Let's see what's in, what's trending, and why are we talking about it? Uh, because yeah, we are spending a good chunk of our day today talking about gamification. Uh, recently, I stumbled upon absolutely amazing report uh, about gamified commerce, not only e-commerce, commerce in general, and they named uh, five major trends. Uh, first of them, uh, I, I just uh, named, uh, I, I just put them in my presentation because I believe this is a very good um, 
um, a very good uh, picture of what is happening right now. So a first big trend, first mega trend in uh, gamified commerce is football gamification. Uh, if we know that there are not super funny uh, moments uh, in our um, buying buyer's journey, like our customer's buyer's journey, it's a good thing to gamify them, to transform them, to make them more playful, more engaging, to give some incentives to people. Uh, we can use countdowns, reveals for interactions, like for example, click uh, this, uh, or not maybe not click, like uh, subscribe to our newsletter and reveal uh, the, this whole collection uh, just for our subscribers. Uh, rewarding for interactions uh, via instant messengers like uh, DM us uh, on, on Facebook Messenger and uh, get extra discount for, uh, for I don't know, new sneakers. Uh, Geo-targeted campaigns are also super fun. Uh, Burger King is a master of them. Uh, Google uh, Secret Whopper. Uh, Burger King uh, detour and you will be treated to a uh, funny stuff. Uh, Location-based communication, this is also a good one. Uh, we've seen that uh, in uh, uh, with the Bulgarian app. Uh, a very recent example, one of many that I have seen uh, recently is, for example, Shopee Shake, a uh, very popular shopping app. Uh, they have this uh, thing where you enter the game and just uh, pick up your phone, shake it a bit, uh, you see what you want. You can win some, some extra credits, some money, uh, for example, uh, extra bottle of shampoo. That's, that's a very uh, simple price, but it gives you this um, sense of, of uh, satisfaction. Let's use this word again. Mm -hmm. Next one, next uh, mega trend is lively loyalty. Uh, through creating consumer experiences, you can drive loyalty through participation in stuff, uh, to, through participation in games, challenges. Uh, to motivate people even more to interact, to do things you want them to do. Uh, you can create, you can reward them for using a product. Uh, you can add mini games within the app. Uh, for example, AliExpress, I believe the, the shopping app had this game where you just uh, click to water the flower, then harvested it, uh, then you can, uh, you can plant another seed and water it again. That, that was a, just a very weird game in a shopping app, yet it was there. And I remember that because I used to play it for a while. Then you can reward recommendations. Uh, very popular uh, Polish uh, food order app, uh, Glovo has this one, just uh, recommend it to a friend and get uh, 15 slots uh, credits uh, for, for your next purchase. Uh, you can give in-app points for real purchases, gamify product and cross-sell others. You can differentiate ways to earn loyalty po points. It doesn't have to be just shopping. You can uh, write a uh, recommendation. You can write a review. Uh, you can add stars to a product. As a company, you will gain zero party data and also some user generated content and people will get some extra loyalty points. This is a win-win situation. Well, little impulse, but still win-win. Uh, an example, Google Maps. This is my profile. Uh, I'm maybe not super active, but I write a review from time to time. So, and I add a few, uh, added a few photos recently. And as you can see, 14,000 people have seen, my, uh, have seen my photos. For me, it's a signal. Okay, I could do more of that because I'm helping people. That's my motivation. That's that's one of my core uh, motivations. I help people. So you can see, I can see that, yeah, I'm doing something and it affects people and it makes sense. So this is a good example of gamification of the app. Next, uh, next mega trend, uh, we have the drop. Uh, Probably many of us have 
seen or taken part in some drop. Uh, I remember vividly uh, when late chips were giving a limited edition of some sort of flavor um, created in cooperation with users. And it was a hit. People were buying those chips because they felt like, oh, next time it can be my flavor. And also they were like, ooh, I have to buy them before uh, they are gone. So that's the magic of, uh, of scarcity. We are using this, this uh, uh, mechanism where people are afraid, afraid to lose something before they even put their hands on it. So companies draw, uh, give lim uh, prepare limited collections for social media to create a sense of limited supply and exclusivity, like only the users of this channel can have this specific branded hoodie uh, so they can show off that, yeah, they are part of community. Uh, they can pick multiple channels to inform about the drop. I will show you a nice example in a while. Uh, they can also uh, engage local celebrities and uh, engage people into scavenger hunt, like Bulgarian app. Again, gamification is all around us. Uh, they can give prize giveaways for engagement. I'm sorry, I must take a sip of my tea. <sighs> Way better. Uh, limited collections, two examples. Uh, there's uh, the core collection of Last Tramp, a uh, company that makes uh, limited editions of uh, cookies and muffins. You can order exclusive box of flavors that won't be available uh, in in a few weeks, let's say, because they they will stop uh, doing them. Also, all those websites with uh, very uh, customized T-shirts they they are masters of uh, of gamification. They have. Uh, limited uh, limited edition of uh, a few uh, things as you can see there's a countdown like only 58 hours to buy a fox collection 34 hours to buy it's edgar Allan poe fit uh, hp lovecraft collection the beauty of that is it's called uh, there's also this very trippy kitty only 10 hours left to buy it uh, and yeah it's it's on sale only for 72 hours you can check a recommendation, uh, you can join a newsletter to get extra special offers. Th these are the mechanisms we, we talked about. I highly recommend uh, checking those websites because they are, they are good at gamification. Uh, the one I'm showing you is other teas, but I believe that you will find uh, at least five other like cover teas, Q, W, E, R, T, E, E, S and many others. Uh, probably Facebook will recommend them to you after this webinar. Uh, another trend, culture hacks. Infiltrating uh, specific cultures that are related to gaming. Uh, for example, hosting a esports event or uh, reaching out to streamers, the popular uh, Twitch streamers. Mm celebrating stuff with fans, showing different ways to use product, partnering with streamers already said that, uh, supporting smaller channels, which, which is also cool, uh, and engaging different generations to leverage inclusivity because of course we can sell to any generation. As an example, I wanted to show you uh, two streamers. One of them is a YouTuber, is a Polish activist, uh, for vegan and climate. Uh, his uh, nickname is Everyday Hero and he's using a Diablo gaming chair. And I know that because they, uh, they put their logo uh, in a very visible place right behind, behind his head. The other one is uh, Twitch uh, most popular streamer Ninja. And I also can see what chair he's sitting on because they put the name in the right place. So yeah, these are the, the examples uh, of, of what we just uh, seen on the other screen. And the last mega trend uh, is uh, gamified stories. Uh, you can always tell a story in a gamified way. You can educate, educate through games. 
you can add extra value, keep it funny or engaging. You can put a spotlight where you want it to be. You can make everything about clients, just put the brand in the background and give clients a platform to have fun. You can organize championships, rivalry, uh, challenges with prizes. You can link it with social media because everyone is sub, is in at least one platform. It might be YouTube, it might be Facebook, Twitter, uh, TikTok, uh, Instagram, so many choices. So there are many ways of, of doing, of diving into this trend and using it for your, um, for to benefit you. Uh, and as an example, I will just show you this absolutely amazing side of uh, marketing agencies, passive, uh, that, that is uh, very specialized in gamification. So that's their website. I just click play and they tell me a story. They educate me about gamification. What we can see uh, is this absolutely amazing tiny game uh, with points with a progress bar and percent uh, and progress bar uh, expressed in percentage and also i can see exactly what i can do touch me touch me now says the white uh, rectangle so i touch it oh my it's a it's a person then we can see a hammer can touch this if you are a 80s or an 80s or 90s kid you probably remember mc hammer who sang, you can't touch this. So now I will touch the hammer. It's in my hand. What happens next? Hit the box, Jack. And don't you turn back. Oh my God, they are using the songs. I do want to touch the box. What will happen? Ah, my motivation. So hit me, baby, one more time. Boom, I'm doing it. Oh, my loyalty grows. Uh, same as progress bar and my points. I will hit it once more. Yay, gamification. Uh, that's not the aim, uh, the end. Uh, I highly recommend you to go through the game. Uh, the name of the website is oscarwegner.pl. Uh, Wegner, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, I just want to show you how to tell the story. They're educating me in what they do best. They're using gamification to teach me about gamification. They are showing me what they can do for me. After this game, I might be more willing to reach them and ask them for consultation rather than reaching other agencies. Uh, okay, so let's pause for a while. Uh, do you have any questions? Because that's a lot of material, I know, but our time is limited, so. Okay, no questions for now. If anything appears, I will see the uh, red dot going from six to seven. Uh, so I will open the window and uh, answer them in real time. So let's see uh, where in all of this falls customer lifetime value. Let's talk about it and its dynamics. Customer lifetime value, every marketer should know that every marketing specialist, every marketing director should know what customer lifetime value is. Uh, it's the total revenue from one customer during its lifetime. And it's very important because as you can see on my graph, uh, in acquisition phase, uh, we mostly pay for customers. They don't bring us money yet. Uh, if we... Uh, use extensively uh, pay-per-click campaigns and uh, we generate only new traffic without loyalizing and, and keeping the customers and re-engaging them after the one-time purchase, uh, we will lose money. Then we turn those uh, first-timers into customers, into, co um, into uh, customers that, that uh, keep coming back and uh, keep giving us our money. So this is retention phase. And then uh, at some point, customer will lose interest uh, with the brand because they found something better. They already start forgetting about them. Their needs changed. And that's the point where their value will slightly go lower. And that's the point where a brand can either re-spark uh, this, this uh, absolutely amazing uh, relationship they had, 
or uh, they will lose the customer. Uh, so yeah, uh, the, that's that's the that's how the customer lifetime value looks through the lifetime cycle of a customer. Um, and uh, the bad news is, uh, if you do not re-engage customers, you lose them. You will be stuck in those early stages of a lifetime, uh, of, of a, um, a lifetime cycle of a customer. They will mostly generate costs, costs of uh, PPC campaigns, uh, ad campaigns, uh, display campaigns, and software you use to reach them and persuade them to, to buy at least one time. Uh, there are also other factors that kill this customer lifetime value. Uh, it's per customer experience. If I enter a website, make a purchase, and then everything uh, goes down south uh, from this point, uh, they don't reach me, the, the delivery is uh, delayed, uh, the product doesn't work, or they just don't put, uh, don't give me any uh, follow up, I will lose interest. Uh, my experience will be, hmm, and I will search for other company. Lack of engagement, losing sales opportunities because we can generate a lot of traffic. We all know that. We, if you put enough money in Google, you will generate a lot of uh, new traffic. But to turn the new traffic into sales opportunities, into paying customers, that's a different tale. So uh, if you are lo keep losing sales opportunities, you lose your money. Uh, if you don't add value, the customer lifetime value will, uh, will uh, drop down. Uh, if you don't use right communication, if your onboarding process is that, that that's all, um, those are factors building uh, this customer experience, but it's worth naming them. Uh, and also leaving customers in the customer path uh, alone. Like uh, I'm here, I have no idea what should I do. I have no guidance, uh, I'm lost. I won't make a purchase or I won't make another purchase with this company because uh, I don't feel like it. So those are the, the things uh, that, that kill uh, customer lifetime value. Uh, the good thing is you still can win. Well-targeted e-commerce gamification can positively impact the entire customer experience with a brand. Uh, it can easily engage people. It can trick people, customers or consumers or contacts into micro conversions like subscribing to a newsletter, clicking on a banner, uh, adding something to a cart, adding something to a wish list. Those are micro conversions. So they become sales opportunities. It's easier to take them, take it from this place and turn them into paying customers than just uh, do it all over again. They help in uh, finalizing uh, those conversions. The, 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 not they, I'm sorry, gamification helps in, uh, in uh, increasing the conversion rate because from micro conversion you can trick people into going through a conversion if you do that extra mile uh, to to make it fun uh, the first mega trend uh, you can re-engage people after purchasing like for example uh, send us a picture of you in this t-shirt and you can win another one uh, so post a picture of you in this specific t-shirt and uh, uh, add our uh, company handle uh, to the description and you will get a shout out in our social media. You will join our tribe. Uh, this kind of incentives. It's very easy to re-engage people who already invested some time and energy uh, in, in, a, in a relationship with a brand. Uh, gamification can also increase retention through brand loyalty. Uh, like this uh, silly... Uh, AliExpress uh, watering flower uh, game, in-app game. I already invested some time. I already spent some time in the app. It's more familiar. I know how it works. I know how it looks from the inside. I'm more uh, willing to use the app again. So it builds loyalty because 
uh, soon after using the app over and over again, it will be my top of mind uh, app, shopping app, for example, all, or the Shopee app, Shopee Shake. After using it, after playing with it uh, for many days, uh, if someone asks me, uh, what's uh, na name three uh, shopping apps? I will be like, okay, so it's Shopee and then uh, it will be my top of mind. It will increase my uh, recogni brand recognition and also it will affect my brand loyalty. Um, one of my colleagues said, uh, amazing account executive, Matia, uh, after we had a chat uh, about this, uh, this, uh, this webinar, uh, I have written my thesis about gamification in the e-commerce and mobile apps. In theory, I knew how important it is to engage clients with a decision process, rewarding specific behavior. Now, with Sales Manago, with our customers, I understood even more how crucial it is to do it in the right way by customizing a program based on the present and future actions, also calibrating the relative price. Uh, so yeah, he said that watching the struggles of our customers marketers like you, marketing directors, uh, executives. Uh, he understood even better how important it is to have the right handle, the right leverage to engage people, to make people interested about your products, to make them care about what you do. Because nowadays it's not that obvious. Uh, we, millennials and younger generations, the uh, majority uh, of paying customers right now, we are not super loyal to brands. We are spoiled rotten with internet, with uh, those very powerful computers uh, that allow us to buy from anywhere at any given moment. So a brand makes something shady, uh, like for example, very recent case, Kanye West had some very questionable uh, comments on uh, social media. Adidas and a few other brands immediately uh, terminated their contracts. And uh, probably many people following them were like, oh, if they, if they keep promoting Kanye, I don't wanna buy their products. So the prediction is Adidas will lose uh, over 200 million dollars or euros uh, in the last quarter of this year. But in general, they will win because they won't be associated with a person who is perceived as uh, racist and uh, anti-Semitic. So yeah, that's, uh, that's how brands have to, uh, have to work because people are not loyal. And if they see the brand does something questionable and shady, they will leave the brand. So yeah, uh, any questions for this part? Okay, no questions for now. Let's dive deeper. Let's see uh, how uh, how brands successfully implement gamification to increase customer lifetime value. Uh, my first real life example is Adidas Urban Scavenger Hunt. Uh, Adidas, uh, producer of uh, sportswear, uh, they have noticed a problem with sneaker resellers that were creating a very high cost for shoes. So instead of that, uh, Adidas uh, invited people uh, to a scavenger, urban scavenger hunt. They uh, put some, uh, some uh, fly posts uh, in key cities and uh, people could scan the code. And after scanning that, uh, they had access to a limited drop, drop and purchase and could purchase uh, sneakers directly from Adidas, which is they could have uh, buy it for cheaper. And also it was very unique product. That was a very good move. And uh, I will stop for a second because there's a question. Uh, Yuji, 
hopefully I'm uh, pronouncing your name right. Uh, could you name some specific features of Sales Managa which helps or could be used for gamification? Yeah, we will get uh, to this point. I have a, a whole table for you. So uh, it will happen in a few minutes. Uh, let's speak through uh, case studies. So this is Adidas stunt. Uh, another one, Dodo case. Uh, that's the uh, website that allows you to hyper personalize uh, iPhone case. Let's say I'm a Lynch fan, and let's go for let's go for uh, Twin Peaks on this one. Check this out. Boom. And I can also add. Uh, no, I don't want interior patterns. Uh, but I want to make it red and I also want to add an elastic. Boom, my Twin Peaks iPhone case. I can do that and I can do that on my own. That's the part of gamification. Mm. Uh, so this is another example. The third one is a major uh, fashion house, Karl Lagerfeld, uh, for their uh, Pixel Spring Collection. They collaborated uh, with uh, uh, with Smack Agency, uh, another agency specializing in gamification, uh, and they prepared a Pac-Man adjacent game uh, using uh, Karl Lagerfeld's cat as a main character and uh, Karl Lagerfeld, Lagerfeld's uh, brick and mortar store from Paris uh, to make this uh, Pac-Man a pack money game and people could uh, go onto their website play the game and yada 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 the result uh they had more than 21,000 visits within the first week and received 18,000 new emails to their database that's a very good uh result so yeah gamification in real life and uh, yeah, now we go to the uh, advanced tools and tactics. Uh, we are we have still uh, twelve minutes. I should it, I should uh, probably fit in this time. Mm -hmm. So uh, even though it's not how to webinar, uh, if you want one, reach us on marketing at sismanago dot com or uh, ask your. Um, account executive or just to reach anyone from our company and we will prepare a presentation for you how you can gamify your commerce with uh, your e-commerce with uh, sales manago however this is a sneak peek i prepared and so tactics to use with uh, sales manago suit uh, you can gamify one product and cross sell another you can use countdowns reveal new products for interactions uh, leverage location-based communication um, you can reward people for using a product reward recommendations differentiate ways ways to earn loyalty points those are all the points we already had uh, in the mega trends because i wanted to show you that yeah you can use those tactics you can offer limited drops and inform specific targeted groups uh, via email. You can pick a uh, best channel to inform about the drop because yeah, we use both uh, zero and first party data to uh, spot the best channel for each uh, and every person you have in your database. Uh, you can design experience of a purchase process. You can make a scavenger hunt, give prizes, uh, gamify education, uh, add some value and keep it funny. And uh, you can make it all about clients because with very uh, specific 360 degrees profiles of, of customers, uh, you, you, know, you know a lot about your customers. You know their motivations, uh, you know what makes them buy stuff, you know what makes them interact with you. Uh, you can organize championships, so you, can, uh, you can reach them wherever and whenever you want with specifically crafted uh, messages. Um, a few examples. Uh, you can inform them, inform them about earning loyalty points. Uh, you can um, ask them to to do the quiz. Quizzes are also very important part of gamification. Uh, you can use social proof to uh, make the sense of scarcity. Like, hurry up! Many people are watching this product. They have it added to their 
um, to their uh, card. So um, the, the, it's, it's not like you will come back in two days and it will still be here. So those are the tactics. And what are the tools you can use for that? Here's the answer. Uh, you can use, uh, first of all, uh, I recommend uh, this customer preference center where you can uh, collect and uh, reuse zero party data. Uh, zero party data is very big trend. They are very in right now. Uh, they are um, the basis for uh, conscious and consensual marketing uh, where you are in a direct two way communication with uh, customers and uh, can adjust your actions exactly to their needs and preferences. Uh, so you can use those quizzes uh, and reward people uh, for for uh, taking part. Uh, you can use loyalty program. We have our uh, uh, natively built in uh, loyalty program that uh, that goes well with uh, other features. Uh, you can connect uh, different activities uh, to that. You, you can use workflows, for example, to, to add points in loyalty program. Uh, you can use emails with scratch coupons. Uh, that's a very fun part. Uh, you just send uh, send a coupon and animate it a little bit. You can use recommendations uh, based on preferences. Um, you can use pop-up sidebars, banners to do a scavenger hunt uh, on your website. You can invite people to, to do a scavenger hunt on, hunt on your website. If they spot something, uh, you can reward them. Like for example, okay, uh, you found this code, you can use it to get a free delivery this week specifically. Uh, you can also uh, set up work workflows that will help you navigate through, through limited drops. Uh, the whole uh, information uh, uh, information part, creating the bus part, and also navigating people through the drop and uh, the sales process. You can do lead nurturing cycles for gamified education. Uh, you can add some incentives. It's not like e uh, lead nurturing email is just a text email. You can add uh, gifts, you can add uh, pictures, you can add scratch coupons. Uh, so yeah, there are many things you can do. Uh, you can use personal shopping inbox to engage uh, people in daily check-ins. You can send uh, in-app messages. Uh, you can send, not in-app, you can send uh, push messages, push notifications. You can uh, in, invite people to make wish lists and then inform them that, uh, hey, you have something on your wish list. Uh, you can show them what they've seen recently. Uh, you can use product uh, of a day uh, uh, flash uh, sales. Uh, you, you can, uh, you can uh, orchestrate this, uh, like uh, pick a product according to uh, someone's uh, preferences and make it a flash sale using multiple channels. Uh, you can make location-based automated messages. Again, just use zero-party data. Uh, that use zero-party data collected about uh, collected about uh, people. Sorry, colleague came in and just started <laughs> speaking very loudly. Uh, uh, ask people where they live. Ask people where they're going on vacation, and use this location to send automated messages. Uh, Use social proof widgets. Uh, this is just a few examples. I, I could go uh, on and on uh, about uh, about uh, sales manager specific features. Uh, however, I believe the whole customer success department is way more qualified than I am uh, to to guide you through that. Uh, but I just wanted to give you a taste of what you could do. Uh, this is just a warm up. So. Yeah, that's. Uh, oh, and here's an example of our uh, workflow library that you can you have already pre-built solutions solutions so uh, you can use uh, ready-made uh, ready-made templates to uh, to ease your work uh, by the way we are working on uh, even more advanced uh, workflow generators so uh, you might want to stay in loop uh, if you want to definitely subscribe to our newsletter and you will uh, get informed uh, what's uh, what's going on uh, next week uh, in in in, uh, in coming months uh, so that's it that's all i have for you today uh, thankfully it's 11:55 uh, we still have 
a little bit space for questions. Uh, so I will be here for next five minutes. And also, if you want to ask me any direct questions, you can write an email on marketing at salesmanager.com or just my uh, name and surname, maya.kowalska at salesmanager.com. And uh, I will be more than happy to, to uh, answer any questions. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you for the compl compliment, Tony. I really enjoyed your questions and engagement. So thanks for, um, for participating. Uh, a lot of inspiration. I'm glad if you, if you get at least one uh, thing that you can use today or tomorrow in your marketing, I will be more than happy to, 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 that I helped. Uh, if you have any suggestions, what would be interesting, also do not hesitate to hit me with DMs on my email. Mary. Oh, thank you, Mary. <laughs> yes, I'm a very, I'm a huge marketing nerd and I could go on and on and on. And uh, sometimes I even run workshops uh, here uh, in Krakow, but uh, we are working on uh, expanding it a little bit more. So we will see. Uh, Vera, thank you. Uh, hope to see you in the kitchen soon, Vera. <laughs> Oh, that's a beautiful place. So, Mary, if you ever put your foot in uh, Royal City of Krakow, definitely you should come to our uh, headquarter and, and just say hi. <laughs> no worries. Uh, so, okay, uh, I guess we are wrapping up. Uh, again, shall you have any further questions? Because I know after webinar, uh, a lot of things uh, just rumble around your head. Uh, write an email, send a message. Uh, we are always more than happy to uh, give you some answers and uh, to interact with you even more. Uh, thank you all for coming today. Uh, for uh, lending me your attention for one hour. That's a lot during work time. So I appreciate that a lot and hopefully see you soon. Bye.